Uh, Robert, we're sitting here in the community center, and I know that it was built originally by the American Legion Post, and you were involved in that, and that happened right shortly after you got out of the, uh, the military, and then I went in the military by the time you got out. And uh, how'd that come about? When, when did you all form the American Legion here at Fox? It's been 66 years ago. 66 years ago? Yeah. Which would have been about 1947? Yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you got the building right at the same time or shortly well, after? A, little, a year or so later. A year or so later. We had a We bought this build, the original building from Wilbur. Yeah, Wilbur, right. Yeah. He, be, he had this rock place built. Yeah. And uh, just a small building here at that time. In fact, there was none of it there. Well, it was their home place. Yeah. I mean, I know you all poured a new floor and put up new walls and roof and all, just about the whole thing. Oh, yeah. That's right. yeah. Now there's no part of this house here anymore. But how many folks did you have in the Legion in those days? I know it was a pretty pretty big operation. Yeah. <clears throat> I can't tell you exactly how got yeah, but there was there was forty or fifty members, wasn't it? Yeah. Something like Something that. Like that. Yeah. I don't know. And, and probably in the very beginning, you all used it pretty much as a place for the community to get together. Right. And, and you, you used it as a voting place, I think, in the very beginning, yeah. didn't you? Mm -hmm. yes. And of course, that was, do you know, do you remember where people voted around here before the building? Yeah, they voted down to the old school. At the old school, huh? Yeah, right. Where we went to school when we yeah, were kids. Yeah. Down there by the cemetery. Yeah. But then from the time you all got this at 48, from then on up until, well, when you turned it over to the community in 1997, it was used all that period of time as a, as a place for the community, really. Right. Had a lot of meetings and stuff here, and it voted here for every election, just about. It was named after uh, Branscombe and Adams. The Adams boy was from Flag. And uh, Branchcombe, he lived down to Tucker Creek. Okay. Both killed? Yeah. Here, when it was the American Legion. Well, we just had a Legion meeting. Uh, our legion meeting, and that was it. A lot of dances and parties. Well, we eventually did have dances and so on every weekend. And then, along in the mid-90s, the number of members of the American Legion Post, the Adams Branscombe Post, number 277, I think it was, a number of, the, of members got low enough to where it really couldn't support the place anymore, if I recall. Yeah, right. And, and that's when you got together with us to see if we couldn't figure out some way to transfer the property over to the community. Right. So I finally went to the county judge, and he put me together with the county's attorney. And they, they decided probably the best thing to do would be to deed it to the county yeah. with the stipulation by the foreign court that it was to be used for the Fox community. Well, the American League, they told me, says you can give that to whoever you want. Yeah. And so uh, we decided the county would be the best. Right, uh, right. And after that, the whole community got together and, and actually put a new roof on it, a new flooring, yeah. Yeah. put the addition on. 
Committee. Fox Community Services Committee. Okay. And it is responsible to the county judge and is appointed by him. And I think uh, I think community has been real pleased with it. Well, yeah. I think it's been not good. it worked out real good. I'm, I'm glad you made that decision back there to to turn it over to the community. So it's been been used a lot to you know I don't know how many families now are using this for their reunion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It goes on all year long. And all sorts of social gatherings happen here. Well we bought the house and used it for a short period of time and then we tore it down and rebuilt it. Checked in here a while back, there's just about six or eight still alive. So were these men all in World War II? Yeah. Yes. That is a, a vocational agriculture class. Are you in that group? Yeah. Which one are you? Okay. And so this was after you returned from World War II? You had classes? Yes, yes. Where did the classes take place? Well, we started at Mountain View and then uh, after we built this school down here, we started having them down here. Okay, and what kind of skills were you learning? Well, farming in general, cattle, cattle industry and our vocational agricultural teachers was Harley and Reese Stamp. During World War II, one of the ladies in the community started embroidering the names of those people in the community who went into the military. It was most of the people who were drafted. And Faye Goodman, I believe was the first one from the community. She wasn't drafted, of course, she was enlisted. And then as other people of the community came along, she added them to the list. And it went right on up until after, until the end of World War II. Uh, actually, the World War II was over with in 45, but Congress decides when wars end and start. And so World War II didn't really end until in 1946. So there's a few names on here of people who didn't go into the military until the end of the war. Actually, in, in my own case, I went in in 46. War was over with. So I got credit for being in during mm -hmm. World War II. So there you are near the bottom, along with Edsel. Yes, Esther Dexter. Esther Hinesley Dexter yes. made this. And she it's made that beginning in 1944 or 45 and then ending in 1946. And this was in the community church down by the cemetery for years and years and years. And we found it in a closet down there and then framed it and hung it up here for the community to see. Shortly after the building was turned over to the community and the committee was formed to manage it, we decided that one of the things that should happen with the building, one, be to honor all the veterans of the community. And we did this by first trying to find out who they were. And to do that, we got a hold of a little book and had listed in that the biographies of a lot of the veterans in the community. And we started with that list, and built on it, and tried to come up, came up with a pretty good list of all the veterans from the rural special school area. And then we started trying to acquire photographs, photographs and biographical sketch on everybody. And we've been fairly successful. We still are short 
about 20 photographs. We do have a list of those names, the ones on which we do not have a photograph or biographical sketch. So it's a continuing project. And of course there will always be new veterans. And we'll try to acquire data on them as we go and move to another wall until the place is completely filled, I suppose. A handful from the Civil War and they're basically the the old time settlers here of the Rushings and the Hinesleys and and that group who came in the community first. Morris, I think he's up there. I think so. Yes, Morris. And some World War One veterans. Uh huh. And initially we were trying to get these in a chronological order, but that didn't work out because there were too many. Initially, we did get them pretty much in chronological order. As time went by, we found some of the old timers who didn't respond initially. Their families came around and got photographs to us. So we lost that pattern. So we have some of these latest pictures that really should have been on the wall much earlier. I had that taken in Washington, D.C just before I was discharged. And how old were you when you went in? Nineteen. And you served how long? Uh, hardly three years. I was in Burma, India, and China. And your brothers? Lamont, Jack, and Charles. And all four of you brothers ended yeah, up in World yeah. War II? Mm -hmm. Did you all go at the same time? Well, Charles, he went in after the war was over. Did he? He went to Japan. So who went first of the brothers? The one. He's oldest. He went first. He spent... 360 days in actual combat oh. in uh, Italy. And you said that Sherilyn uh, did this map for yeah. you, showing uh, everywhere you served yeah. Yeah. in World War II. It showed your route. I started here and went to Washington State. Took for my basic there. And from Washington, I went to Newport. No, was Virginia. Caught a boat there and went to Oran, North Africa. And from Oran, North Africa, went down through the Suez Canal. Incidentally, I got on a boat in North Africa. It was English boats, Limeys. And they had us to pick up the gear and go to the next ship. And the one that we was on first got sunk and 1,100 soldiers was killed in that. And we come down, went through the Suez Canal, through the Red Sea, and into the Arabian Sea, through the Arabian Sea. To Bombay, India, then caught a train there, went across to India too, to Bombay, went to Calcutta. Stayed, stayed a year there, went from there to Lido, India, by train, caught a plane there, and went down to. Went down to Burma, I can't think of the name of the town. And that's where we took our advanced jungle training. And then by foot, we circled around and come back to the Burma Road back here. Okay.
a, then I flew back to Calcutta. Caught a ship there and went by ship to Australia. From Australia up here to these islands and took on supplies. Went from there to Guam. From Guam through the Solomon Islands. This is by ship. San Francisco to Hawaii and then back to San Francisco. This is me and my brother, both stayed on active duty until retired, and uh, with three sons on the bottom over here. You might be interested in knowing that the five of us together served on active duty in the Army and the Air Force for a period of more than 120 years. In the family, four of us are retired colonels. One did not say a moment to retire. About 225 on the wall, and we have another 15 or 20 to go. Maybe we'll get them someday. <laughs>